Hey, Sophia. Hi, Jonathan. How are you? I'm excellent. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for joining and being part of this project. Of course. Thank you for uh, having me. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, Sophia is a very good friend of mine. Uh, we met um, maybe like two or three years ago now through a mentoring program that she was a part of and I was a part of. And I was really impressed with her background and everything that she does. Honestly, I don't know how she does it, um, but I'm not going to talk too much about what she does. I'm going to let her introduce herself because uh, she can do a much better job than I can. And then we can get into our topic of real estate, uh, real estate investing and Airbnb. Uh, so Sofia Corcho, this is your audience. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much for uh, that uh, warm introduction, uh, Jonathan. Well, uh, where to start? Uh, right now, you just got me in a very uh, busy time of my life. I'm doing a lot of things uh, from a place of uh, passion, from a place of love. Um, I work with Hispanic stars. Uh, I just opened the Hispanic star uh, hub in Boston. I also work with Alpha, which is the association of Latino uh, professionals in America. And I work with uh, Latino founders and Latino entrepreneurs, making sure that they have a place to connect, to network, to uh, learn and, and be supported and be highlighted for all the contributions that they do uh, to the local economy. And uh, during my, <laughs> during my uh, free time, I guess, or the opposite, I work uh, with Excel Hub Venture Partners. Uh, it's a firm in Boston, a venture capital firm, and we support Latino founders in South America that want to scale and bring their uh, innovations, their uh, disruptive uh, technologies into the United States. So we have a um, we have a accelerator in Colombia, and we're working also with the government of Chile, and we bring them here uh, to launch in Boston. And uh, that's my um, full time job. And those the other ones are my philanthropic um, contributions. That's awesome. Uh, so I know you mentioned Hispanic stars, and I know you're leading that effort in Boston. And I also know that you have some really cool events coming up, I think, for Hispanic Heritage Month uh, and some things around wealth building. Uh, yeah. So you can tell us a little bit about that. Yes, definitely. So, well, the idea is that uh, we connect, um, we let the city know that Hispanics are in Boston and that we are powerful, we are passionate, and we have a lot to do. City. So we want to make a big uh, celebration around the Hispanic Heritage Month. So we're going to kick off, we're going to activate um, the Museum of Fine Arts. Uh, it will, we will do like a premiere. So we will um, showcase the uh, On the Heights movie, followed by a panel uh, with the director and then like a networking session. We also want to um, bring the national anthem uh, in Spanish to all the uh, games in, around the city, the Red Sox, the Celtics. So that's, that's, that's all in the, in, in the books. Nothing is set on stone yet, but uh, we're working towards that. And with Alpha, we're gonna have, um, uh, we're gonna have a webinar, how to build wealth, multi-generational multi wealth uh, for Hispanics. So that, that will be great on September 30th. September 30th, How to Build Multigenerational Wealth webinar through Alpha Boston. Correct. Yes. All right. So for everybody watching, we're going to publish the link to sign up whenever that is ready. So Sophia will make sure that everybody can get access to that because that's going to be life changing for a lot of people. So I'm super excited to have you here. Tell us about that. Now people have time to plan for it. So, yeah, so no excuses. Can't miss it. Yeah, the first section is um, traditional versus, versus um, traditional versus alternative investments. So we're gonna talk like what are the pros and cons of traditional investments and what are, what are the opportunities with uh, alternative investment like venture capital, 
Bitcoin, uh, cryptocurrency, and all of that that is new, and, and how we can actually um, get a piece of, of, of the game uh, for Latinos. And in the second session, we're going to talk about raising capital uh, as an entrepreneur, like what, what opportunities are out there for us, how we should do it, how we should plan for it, what is the timeline, what are the considerations that we should have when raising capital, who we, sh who we bring into um, our advice support and why uh, those people, you know, like being more uh, of every single step that we um, take when building our, our entrepreneurial ventures. Cool, awesome. So I see some people that I know personally, and I think a couple of them that you know as well. So thank you everyone for the support, uh, for being here. There is a question mark icon on the bottom right. So if you have any questions along the way, you can submit them. I'll read them and I'll see where I can fit them in the conversation. So don't be shy. Um, I did ask you all to come prepare. So uh, we'll definitely hear some questions. So um, Sophia, let's talk a little bit more about like, your background. And obviously you're in Boston. I'm in Boston as well. Uh, but you're from Colombia. So can you tell us a little bit of how you chose to come to Boston? Like why Boston versus other cities? And then, uh, yeah, let's start with that and then uh, we'll continue. Sure. So I arrived in Boston, I guess, by accident. I came here to visit a, a, a family member and I didn't plan to stay longer. Uh, my best friend, she lived, uh, at the time, she used to live in New York and she called me and she told me, like, Sophia, why don't you stay, uh, learn English? go back to, to Colombia, like take advantage of the ticket, take advantage of uh, the opportunity, the family member is hosting you and see if that could be a possibility. So I found an English school right away and it was, it was meant to be, it was meant to be. And I, I was planning to stay for three months uh, after that, but it, it took me longer uh, to learn English. So I decided prolongate my stay and I find a job and I really like the dollar sign <laughs> and at the time I, I, I spent all my savings in my uh, education so I really want to go back to Colombia with some money in my pocket because I, I that was the, first, the, the main the main goal to go back with some dollars to continue my education there or to buy properties or to buy real estate or to open a business but uh i always have i, I always been an, an entrepreneur by heart when a empresaria the chiquita i run a the family business i my mom just gave me total freedom to create things around uh, the family business and i really liked working with money like that was I really, I was really good with numbers, and I see how like my mom was a single mother uh, raising three kids, and she was just amazing. She was so, um, she did everything. Like I don't know which, like with con que tiempo, which oh, that time, like she would do all those things. But it was inspirational. It was really, really inspirational, and and I grew up like that. I I, I grew up. I grew up knowing that I can do everything and anything that I put my mind into, and I prove it. So, cuando me quise venir a Estados Unidos, I did a raffle. Uh, when, when I was planning to get my first ticket, did a raffle. Say, okay, uh, I don't know, I will raffle $100, and I made it happen. I made it happen. And every single thing that I accomplished is because I put my mind into it. And I do the impossible, and the, I do the impossible to make sure that it, it I don't, um, no me de mi misma, that I prove that I'm capable of doing those things. So I, I, I set my mind to that goal, and I move cielo y tierra to make sure that I, it, it happens. Uh, that's, that's, that's the short story. And after that, I, I didn't want to go back to Colombia without money, without property, or without a master. So I continue working. I continue um, developing myself. I continue building relationships. And 
I bought an apartment in Colombia, then I have to pay for, for the apartment, right? So it's better to work here than to go back to Colombia and, and earn pesos. So that's that's why my st my my study uh, my study was longer. And uh, lately, so I graduated, I paid my masters, and I got married, and now I don't think I will go back to Colombia. <laughs> That's going to be a, a very long um, talk if you decide to go back and have to bring Jorge along with you. Yes. Yeah. 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 For um, sure. I guess what I see is like sometimes I love my country. I love, love my country. And I always wanted to give back to, to the community. I always wanted to do something for women. But sometimes this, you, the impact is larger if you are outside the country. So I know that uh, having uh, that sense of like knowing what is going on in the United States, I can implement some things there, but it, it helps sometimes to take, to be a, away from, from the place to contribute to that place. And that's, that's where I am right now with Colombia and, and living in Boston. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. And you said you did a master's and that was an MBA, correct? See, si, on master, uh, I did an MBA, master in business administration, correct? All right, so I'm gonna go back because I just learned a lot of things about you that I didn't know. Uh, so I'm gonna ask you more about what was, it, what was it like growing up, seeing your mom basically raise three kids on her own, but then also like running the family business and being able to participate in that. And how did that help shape who you are today? I know you spoke a about that a little bit already, but I want to dive deeper into that. So since I was 13 years old, I remember. So my mom, she had a hair salon. And she was like, Nijita, help me here with, I don't know, start start getting the guy ready to cut his hair. I was like, okay. I start cutting his hair. Like, mom, I don't know how to. Just just start start with, with the end. <laughs> And I, when, when, when I was 15, I was actually working in the hair salon. I was doing everything. I know how, like, I was a professional. So uh, my mom opened a spa, then I op he opened a, a second salon, then she opened a boutique, then she opened a restaurant, then she opened a, a jewelry store. And, like, you have to roll. You have to uh, uh, help her because it's, it's the three of us. So... And, and the money is for, for the family. So we have to contribute, we have to help and we have to run the business because mama's actually opening another business or she's taking care of, or, of a problem somewhere else and nobody is there, only the employees. So you have to actually, uh, tienes que estar vigilando el negocio. And that's how I grew up. That's how I grew up. I grew up knowing that everything can be possible, can be done. And there is no limitations, only in your mind. And I took, I, I put that in my heart. Um, my mom, she moved from the small city to the big city, uh, just to, to help her, her family. And I see that I moved to, from Boston to United States. I just follow the same steps. And I, I was actually reflecting on that. And I was like, she cannot say go back, did the same thing. She's a, she's, she's a powerful, uh, entrepreneur and she looks for the end goal, which is a bigger vision and how we can actually build well, how we can actually, um, raise that uh, multi-generational capital to support the family. So my dream is just to build a, to have a portal of, um, a portal of opportunities that can support and help uh, the next generation of uh, cultures and palillas. So um, that's, that's, that's what is in my heart. Speaking of heart, I don't know if you can see it, but people are hitting the heart icon a lot. So you're getting a lot of hearts right now. I actually see my friend Saira. She was a, a, a friend in, back in high school. This is awesome. Hi, Saira. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I see a couple of other people that I know and a couple of other people that I know you know as well. So it's really cool. I want to ask you more about this whole like growing up in a very entrepreneurial nuclear family. Um, like, would you say, would it be fair to say that a lot of the work ethic that you have today, so again, you do a lot of things, and honestly, I don't know how you find time to do all those things. Did you develop that, uh, like, through those experiences? Or do you also feel that there was, like, 
some coaching along the way, maybe from your mom or other family members. What was that dynamic like? So uh, that's that's a great question. Well, I have to find my way here. Like I, I, I have to make a lot of mistakes to get where I am at the moment because I didn't have support. I was alone in the United States. I was figuring out things on my own. I didn't speak the language to, you know, translate on my own, making connections and understanding things and putting some common sense of what's going on here. Uh, of course, I have this, this, the spirit, I have the passion of my mom in the back, like supporting me, like, hey, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it, right? And I, I feel like um, we are amazing. Latinos are amazing. So I, I wasn't afraid of uh, doing great things because I know, like, the, the, I know our power. I know that we have a great, uh, we have great values, we have great work ethics, and that's, that translates in everything that we do. Um, I guess La Berraquera, that's something that I inherited from my mom. I don't know if you can find a, a word for Berraquera in English. I think that's a word for Berraquera in any other <laughs> Spanish dialect. <laughs> a Berraquera is just like that confidence that you can do things, right? That you are not afraid of anything and you can't, it's like, you are doing great things, you're doing good things, you're not hurting anyone. And for that, you deserve to, to find success. So La Berraquera was something that I, I inherited with my, my mind and the positive mind that Colombian has. Like, we, we can do it. Yes. Like, oh, can you jump from here to there? Yes, I don't know how, but we can do it. Uh, do you know how to fix that? I can do it. Let me research, but I'm sure I can do it. So it's focus on the solution, not in the problem. The mindset of focusing on the solution, not in the problem. Focus on the opportunity, capitalizing on the things that you can control. That's, that's, that's what got me where I am at the moment. So it, my mom is not a rich mom. She we were middle class. And she capitalized in every single space uh, in her business, like in the house. She was uh, hosting um, tourists. She was hosting students. So I always share my house with someone else. Like she wanted, rent she was renting rooms in the in the in the house. Like in the first floor, it was a local commercial um, locales comerciales, and she was having businesses in there. So like we always share the house. Uh, and in the local, like she was having a side for this and a side for that, right? So she was always capitalizing at in any opportunity at any space, and I was like, huh. So when I when I came to the United States, I was like, okay, what can I do with what I have? What can I do with what I have? And that I find opportunities. I find, or I create my opportunities, or I create my own tables. So it's perfect segue into the next topic I want to talk about, which is how do you start to find those opportunities once you were here? And I guess once you realized you were going to be here longer than you initially planned and that you needed more money, um, obviously the first one was finding a job. Uh, but then, you know, tell us a little bit about your first foray into entrepreneurship, or like your first business venture and how that went. So I was an uh, international student, Jonathan, and international students are not allowed to work in the United States. And they pay a high price for their tuition. It's like really, really difficult to be an international student in the U.S. if you, don't, if you, don't, if you are not from a rich family. Uh, but I have that passion that I want to make a life in the United States. I want to make it happen. I don't want to go back to Colombia telling my mom that I couldn't do it, that I'm broke, that I don't, ha I didn't build a, a, an empire, that I, I miss all these years of uh, being with my family for nothing. I cannot, I, I couldn't go back home without building my empire, right? So I, I had that need of proving everyone that it, it is possible and it, like especially proving to myself that it's possible. So I have not, not, not other uh, choice than make it happen one way or the other. And that's the difference, that's, that's, 
that's the difference between the people that accomplish things and the people that don't. It's, it's a matter of mindset and it's waking up every single day, day and reading your your um, affirmations and believing in the, in the important and go reverse engineering and make it happen. Knowing your end goal, so okay, so I want this empire, how I make it, how I build it. And it, it, it brings you back to every, every day, um, giving priority to the things that bring, get you closer to that empire, right? So like from my agenda, like who I give priority to talk to. I want to talk only with CEOs. Uh, from, my, from my agenda, who, what is more important? I go out with my friends or actually researching or actually preparing for my certification or actually uh, putting more love, more work into my, 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 my venture. So having those priorities in place is, is key to accomplish uh, those big goals. And I, I agree. And then how do you find the balance between, you're very driven. Like I, I think I realized that when I first met you and the more we're, the more I've gotten to know you, and now the more we're talking through this, the more obvious it is. Um, so, how do you balance that and also give yourself the permission to have some downtime to take care of yourself uh, beyond obviously pursuing your goals? Is part of taking care of yourself. Like sometimes you need to rest and like recharge. How do you balance that out? There is a point where you have to understand that if you don't bring light back into your life you cannot create anything so i make room for salsa dancing i make room to uh, network and, and meet with friends i make room to sing to uh, go on and, and listen to uh, bachata merengue reggaeton i make room to spend time with my husband and I prioritize, I know how to delegate, and I be, I'm super strategic or where I spend my time, how I spend my time, who I talk to, and what is, what is in there for me. What is in there for me, right? So I don't commit to things unless there is something around that that benefits me one way or the other unless it's non-profit. But still, even the non-profit, it serves me it serves me. It has to serve me one way or the other, because it's like they don't, they don't pay you, so it has to be a benefit in there for you, right? So you ha sometimes you have to be selfish and uh, prioritize um, on those things that you're doing to make sure that they will they will serve you. That makes sense. Um, when you were getting to a point where you had to decide. I guess you didn't really have to decide if you were going to stay, but more so how you were going to stay. Um, other than pursuing your MBA, what are other options that you consider at that point in time? So I'm trying I, to get this statement around doing things that benefit you in the long term. Yeah. So I always wanted to uh, open a business here, but I was an international student. So in my mind, it was like, how I make it happen? How I make it happen? Well, who I can partner with, who can do these things for me, or who I can um, bring him on board to, to sign those papers for me, or to sign that lease, or, you know, it's like, yes, I have my hands tied, but my, my mind is not tied, right? And there's people, friends, family around me that can make things possible for me, that can facilitate things for me. And, and that was, that was, I guess, the, the grace of God that put those angels, those great people that connected with me and helped me build those opportunities, right? But it's because I, um, I have the end goal in mind and because I was strategic on those, on those connections and because I connect with the right people too. It, like you and I are connected because of the right reasons, right? Otherwise, you will not see me as... as someone to speak at, at uh, real latinx is because when you are uh, in tune with yourself and with your goals those opportunities arrive that those people's get in your in your table um they open doors for you and, and that's 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 how it was i 
I knew I wanted to have a business. I didn't have the money. I didn't have the resources. I didn't have the knowledge, but I knew I, I wanted to do it. And uh, I was ready for the opportunity. I was I was super ready for the opportunity. I will not let anything. I will not that let. I will not let that pass, unless it's because I made a mistake, but not because I say no to the opportunity. And then as you were in that mindset of I'm ready for the opportunity, opportunities came. And then is that when you started to pursue the Airbnb route or did you pursue something else before? Like how did that come to be? No, so, okay. Mm, I know I couldn't work here, but doesn't mean I couldn't work in Colombia. So actually building uh, my business in Colombia, I have a team there, I have spa i have my real estate there and i was uh, building capital in colombia and that supports my studies here that supports my education and that supports what uh, the next chapter of my life which was uh, my my entrepreneurial uh, journey in the but i was i was working with the things that in control and with the things that are available at the moment i capitalize on my resources at a hundred percent, I guess. And then like, obviously, so you started with real estate in Colombia. So let's go back to that for a second. You mentioned you bought an apartment and then was that also part of your Airbnb journey or was that just like a regular apartment that you were renting out to people? So I always wanted to buy a, a, a house in Colombia. And uh, I know that if you buy it uh, when they are on in Planos, uh, mm -hmm. Says in English, uh, yeah, yeah, like, um, what's it called? Uh, pre sale, I think. Oh, pre construction, like pre -construction. Pre -construction that's right. Construction. So, is that their way like cheaper and you can pay the down payment in two or three years? So, I, that, that, that was the thing there. I was like, okay, I will do it. Uh, I know 300, 400 monthly, I can pay that. And I know that after three years, I already have a valuation of uh, 40, 40 or 50 percent on, on the on the property. And at that point, and maybe buy a house that it, it's it's more aligned with uh, my vision. But um, that's how it started. I, I got the apartment and then I rented. I was like, OK, so what can I do to what can I do to have a high return in my investment, right? And that was when Airbnb was presented to me. So I can actually put that apartment into Airbnb, build a team around it, someone that cleans, someone that manager ma manage the, the property, someone that helped me uh, more than in English because I didn't speak English that well at the time. And, but I, and it happens and it worked and it was generating uh, revenue and now I, I feel like every every night uh, reservations and that, that was awesome i found my golden path and i was seeing great things in colombia i was like okay how can i do how can i do this here so i was living in a city called cambridge uh, next to harvard square harvard university and it's so beautiful, like a full of international students. There is a lot of uh, doctors and professors that came to the area to, to be in touch with university or conventions or uh, webinars and things like that that are, are happening around the city. And I always have friends uh, visiting, like, oh, can I send your apartment? Like, I will sleep in the sofa. Like, I will sleep in an air mattress, whatever. Just let me stay so close to the city, so close to the train, so convenient. And it's a beautiful area. Like, I don't care. So, um, then I was, I had a roommate at the time. He moved out with his, uh, with her uh, boyfriend. So I have a two bedroom apartment paying, uh, I guess, $2,000 on rent. And I have it like super like clean and decorated and with a lot of love, a lot of light, super like super super nice because that's how I like to live. 
So I didn't want to find a new roommate because I, I like having my room. I like having my privacy. I like having um, a space myself. And I was thinking like, what can I do to continue uh, continue having this place for on my own? So I implemented Airbnb into my apartment. I started uh, with one bedroom. At that, point, at that moment, I have a boyfriend, so I, I would sleep at uh, his house and, and I was renting one one bedroom and then I have a increase for the entire apartment and it was the double of money and so I was like okay so that means if I stay out for the weekend Saturday Sunday I can earn thousand dollars and if I do that for two weekends then I can pay the entire rent <laughs> but if I do that for 30 days then I can pay 400 uh, for four months of rent so my numbers, you know, like I start multiplying resting so I'm like, okay, okay, like hundred percent, hundred percent revenue, two hundred, three hundred percent revenue, and um, I was like, okay, I have to multiply this operation. I have to do more of this, right? I love traveling, so it was just perfect because I I will um host uh, international professionals and they, they came from all over the world all over the world with great stories because in this they, they came to the city with a purpose like very smart people uh, that came here with to teach something or to learn something and that, that was fascinating to me and i also want, wanted to have the opportunity to travel around the world and around the, the, the united states so that was the perfect scenario like renting my place uh, the income I will pay for my 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 trips and I was having friends helping me with my Airbnb then I have I built a team around it and, and it was just magnificent it was just wonderful and then I had a property manager well we can we can stop there <laughs> No, that's great. Keep going. So, I mean, at this point, you had your basically your home, right? An apartment you were renting. Your roommate moved out. You started renting a room on Airbnb. Then people wanted to rent the whole apartment for every two weekends. So, in two weekends, you would have enough money to cover your rent. Yes. And then the third weekend, you had enough money to go on a trip. So, in any given month, you could basically spend every weekend traveling and have your rent and your travel cover. All right. That's like the beginning. That's the beginning of the empire, of the Airbnb empire. Yes. Yes. So that's the one. So I know, I know you grew beyond that quite a bit. Yes. So then I was like, okay, so I don't have money to open uh, an, another Airbnb. So what can I do to increase that revenue? Right. So then I was, I start paying attention to the business. So what's going on around the city? What's going on around, like what events I have, what events are coming up? What hotels are charging? What others in Airbnb are doing? How I can potentialize my listing? So instead of earning 4,000, I earn 8,000 on a two bedroom apartment per month because I was paying attention to the details and I was following the money, follow the money. So I know the marathon is coming. People start charging more and more. And I know people like clean places and people will pay because it's a clean place. And you know, and if I have a air mattress or if I have a sofa in the living room, then instead of six people, I can host eight people and have an extra charge for for those um extra people so i i was again capitalizing on the things that i have capitalizing on my resources and control the things that were like i was able to control i start saving okay let's put money on the side let's put money on the side let's pay the debts right and whatever is extra put the money on the side put the money on the side and i was having conversation with friends like this is working but i have i'm inter i'm an international 
like I cannot even sign leases or I can I don't even have credit like what can I do like let's do together let's, let's build a business you know so when people see with that enthusiasm and like hey like mm, yeah like what did you have right so you want to partner with people that have good spirit that is enthusiastic about business that is not what they do and they put their heart into the venture and they don't want to fail those are the people that you want to uh, build businesses with and I have a friend uh, at the moment I was like, okay Sophia I have a contact right so he's a property manager and he has so many properties around let's have a conversation so I, I I sit with him right I was prepared so I have plan A plan B plan C maybe plan D right I have a, a uh, a value a clear vision for this guy one way or the other i will work with him and it take me uh, it take me so long to 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 get in business with him because he saw the value i was making sure that he, it was clear for him to see what the potential of this business it, we started the conversation right like okay so what is in there for me should I, so I, I told him, okay, so if I, if you're selling one of the properties, I will be happy to stage it for you, right? And schedule two days a week that you can have full um, visits uh, to see the place. The other five days are for me, reservations. So he doesn't have to pay the stage to a company and he will have professional pictures paid and he will have the place clean and ready uh, every time he have a showing and he will have the place maintained, like everything will work. In the that was one value proposition. Second value proposition was, okay, so I can pay you a little bit high. Uh, instead of 2,000, I paid 2,100, just a low. No, no, that doesn't work. Well, maybe 2,200, okay, let's talk, right? So it's, it's how you had the negotiation. Um, and then I have, uh, like, that was probably for apartment number two. For apartment number two, I was like, okay, you're doing super great. How about you share, some, you share uh, a little bit of that revenue? Instead of paying me 200, uh, 200 extra on top of, of the rent, how about you pay me a 2% uh, of each reservation? I was like, are you sure? Sure, yeah, well, okay. Uh, that that works for me really really good. So then I pay two two percent uh, revenue for him because I have lo low months. They only have one reservation, but I have higher months like summer months where I I will have 30, 40, 50 reservations. Uh, that was a scenario three. Uh, what was the other one? Um, oh, we I partnership with him. So 50 50 for the fifth apartment. Like okay, we buy things together you said, fifth apartment. Huh? you said fifth apartment yes yes okay so you went from this is my home that i've just put an airbnb to now you're using five properties that belong to somebody else yes. that you have an airbnb and that you're making money off but you didn't own any of those properties these are the person that yes i didn't own any of those properties mm, they were not mine I was just only paying rent. I was just only paying commissions, and I was just making. I was just giving some a fifty percent equity o, uh, on the business. So at the end, it was we we are partners. Well, it he gave me every opportunity. Like, but I I work with him because I know the potential. He own, he have three hundred properties, so it's better for me to build volume than to stay with five apartments. Right. So those, those, those were the, the conversations and, and then I was like, okay, so I don't like your apartments. I actually want something different and different cities. So let's have those conversations with realtors or have, let's have those conversations with um, landlords. No? I had money already. I can pay, I have credit, like things changed. Things changed. So I have more opportunities to do things on my own. Um, and that was amazing. That was like really, really good. But it's how do you have how do you have that conversation? What is the uh, value proposition that you present to these people? And who do you partner with? Right? It's not with everybody that you can do business. Who do you partner with? And what is in there for what is in there for them? And what is in there for you? 
uh, and it was it was just amazing. It was a really, really, really good and powerful um, opportunity. So, well, that's that's awesome. First of all, um, but like, how much time did it take you to go from like having your own apartment listed in Airbnb and realizing the opportunity there to not having you know this partner that was basically providing the properties? I didn't have time. Like I have to, do, like, I can tell you that I put a listing in place in two days. Okay. Because, uh, things were happening in the city. The marathon is, it was about to start, or the graduations are about to happen, or the, um, this event is about to, to, to be, to be here. So I didn't have time. I was capitalizing on the opportunity. So sometimes it took me three, three like the, the first one took me three months to decide, to see if it was for me, to see if I had time, to see who's gonna clean, who's gonna do this for me, blah, 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 three months. The second one, it was like, okay, like the money, let's make it happen one way or other. It took me one month and so on. It was like, I was, I was putting listings in, in, in less than two days. I was furnishing apartments in less than two days. And I have a whole operation of how to do those things. I was like, I was super um, smart and strategic on even how I buy things, right? So I have a mechanism for everything because I, I was a one person show. I was doing everything. So I, how I can automatize every single process that serves me and save me time and actually increase my lifestyle. We get to those five properties. What happens next? So, okay. Uh, what happened next is COVID. <laughs> <laughs> COVID. So I was actually, so before, before uh, apartment number one, I was looking at, I have a, a risk plan in place, right? So saving the money. So this is a first a, a one month contract. I have the deposit. I can I can return the apartment at any right? And it's, it's, it was a contractual uh, agreement because you like I knew that the winter months they were not good in Boston. So I know I knew that uh, until November I will have those because I will not pay rent for, for apartments, so I will not be um, having revenue for during those months. And that was very smart, like on my own, to have that in place, because when, when COVID arrived, I have secured, I don't wanna tell the number, a high number of reservations and revenue coming in, and I saw that like going in two days. Well, especially because Boston banned Airbnbs uh, during that time, right? So it was uh, the city. I can they they cancel um, flights, they cancel the events, they cancel of the like um, yeah, they cancel everything from the city. The marathon, the graduations, people start graduating online. So it was like it was it was the end of 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 those reservations. So that happens on March 15, and I told him to told them, okay, on April. So I have to act super, super quickly. Uh, every day was crucial um, for me. I, and I told them, okay, so this is gonna be my last month. So from March 15 to April 15, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what is happening, but I know I ha I can put things in a storage and that will be cheaper. And that was the best decision ever. That was the best decision ever to put things on a storage because it took actually a year to recover, like to Airbnb to go back to, to what it was. So imagine if I was actually paying rent for a year without having any revenue. So I, I believe I exit successfully out of my business. So what's the, what's next? Are you trying what, to? So what is next? Um, I've been I've been analyzing like uh, is this the right time to start Airbnb? Is this the right time to stay to buy a home? And no, this is not the right time for neither of them. It's not the right time to buy a house. 
this is a buyer's market and it's not the time to to start an airbnb business because people are still afraid of traveling so you will actually put work into something that is not giving that is not going to give you income right away so i will wait i have my savings and i will wait uh in the meantime i actually have um businesses in colombia that are working for me and i have my money in different pockets i have alternative investments i have cryptocurrency and i have small businesses in colombia so those things are working in the meantime so when I, when when is when the opportunity arrives i will be ready to to do something bigger again very cool so uh funny you say that um right now it's not the time to invest in airbnb and i do agree right now it's a horrible time to buy a home if you plan to live in it and not make money from it but i just put an offer on an airbnb property in florida so i was like i can actually look you in so you can advise me so actually that's okay so i'm in boston thinking about buying a property is a total different thing that every single city has its own uh qualities his own specifics miami is a great right now i'm going to tell you why first every single like people around the world are traveling to miami to get vaccinated to get vaccinated it's just like the hub of vaccine so that's just from there that's that's amazing uh it's a portal for for e-commerce for commercial is is el es un portal importante de comercio en los Estados Unidos the beach is the one of the, i would say number one city to party in the in in the United States and the beach is there like the beach is there so i have friends doing airbnb uh she just got her third property she moved out from her house to an apartment and just got a multifamily uh apartment as well and a multifamily house and they actually build um, build a new property in the backyard of his house so they are just doing super super great uh, with airbnb in my figure yeah so it's a good impression i think you know i need to back out yeah so th so that's it's that's interesting no 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 i i go for it don't be afraid go for it lo peor que te puede pasar is like you will sell and this is a time for for you to sell like even if you hold the, the property for four months still a good price so there's nothing for, for for you to lose and even if you don't find uh airbnbs you can rent it or you can have roommates you can live there like there is many opportunities but you have to take action you have to start somewhere right it's like having the money in the bank is good but you can actually work with the money yeah this will be my very first time doing anything with airbnb so i'm definitely gonna yeah. have to uh hire you for advice yeah, no, I will be happy to. So there is there is some strategies around that. Like even even before you put a, a an offer, you can actually find out if that location is convenient, if hot market for Airbnb, and you don't even have to take um, you don't even have to risk any money to find out if uh, you have opportunities in there for in, in that location. And I will be happy to to support you in that. Cool. Maybe we can do another session on that. So uh, for those who join a little bit later, there is a question icon on the bottom. If you have any questions, please ask them now. Uh, Sophia, I wanna be respectful of your time. We're actually a little bit over the time that I promise you this will take. Um, so as we start to close out, uh, since I don't see any questions coming in just yet, um, I wanna ask you, have you, like in your plans, I know you're kind of, I'm not going to say waiting, but I guess analyzing how things are going. Uh, it sounds like you will jump back into Airbnb at some point. Are you planning on focusing in Boston or are you looking to branch out uh, in other cities in the U.S., maybe internationally? Like, what are your thoughts around that currently? So, okay, so I guess you have to be ready uh, in terms of like, having the money, having everything that you can control now, the money. Um, the advisors, the professionals, the the best um, right on, on and, and close to you, 
so when the, the opportunity is there you can call the right person you can call the the uh, the, um, the right realtor you can do your due diligence any step farther to to that uh, but you have to be you have to you need to have an open mind to visualize that opportunity right and so i have an apartment in cambridge so what's going on around the city what that city is known for what the city is good for who is the who visits that city when what time of the year um for how long do they stay are they students are they professionals are they professors are they scientifics how important is for like they will pay a, a premium uh, price for that for for staying close to the university for staying close to that airport you have to do a, a very intensive uh, due diligence around that opportunity it's not the same buying uh, in Miami than buying in Cambridge and buying in, in, in a city that nothing is happening. And and also like, what is your lifestyle looks like? What are the things that you like to do? Because if you like um, experiences, then it doesn't matter if you live in the city. It doesn't matter if you buy a property in the city, you can buy properties around the mountains or around a good uh, land, land uh, at a tourist, uh, a touristic uh, place, so you have to oversee those things and, and study the market and go online, look on Airbnb, what's going on in that place, how good are those reviews, how many people they're hosting, uh, what is the calendar looks like for the next year, is there, uh, how is the winter, how is the summer. So you have to really uh, study, take that serious and, and make it happen. And then if you commit to buy a property, you have to do the impossible to, to make it, uh, to succeed on that. And I'm sure you will, even if that doesn't have any, any, um, you know, tiene ninguna, like, it doesn't look appealing. I'm sure you can make something out of that. I'm sure you can. So just to close out, and if there's any final thoughts that you want to share. Um... Yeah, so I, I, my recommendation here is uh, before we buy houses, before we save money, before we plan on the big thing, right? We have things on, my, uh, on your hands that you can control. Work with them, explode them, copy on every single sense, every single space, every that like you have a garage, you have a two-bedroom, you have an office that you're not using, you have a local that you're not using, you have you're not spending the week in your house, like you have a, a, a home in the in the in the beach that you don't use in after the summer. So look for the things that you have around and capitalize on them before you jump into a new venture. That that would be my recommendation. Cool, that's awesome. Sofía, muchas gracias. No. La nueva, berraca, berraquera. Gracias, uh, yo, sí. I, I'm glad you, you invite me. I, I, I love helping. I love uh, sharing my, my little experience and I, I love sharing a little wisdom that I have with the people that uh, uh, deserve it. So anytime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what this community is about at the end of the day, sharing knowledge, sharing the knowledge that most people in our community didn't get growing up. So I'm happy to do that. Again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, everyone who joined. Um, yeah, and uh, we'll see you in the next session next Tuesday. I'm having um, my friend Andre Vaquero, a teacher turned entrepreneur, talk about his journey into entrepreneurship and real estate. And Sophia, I think um, we have a lot of uh, topics that we left on the table that we can probably cover in another session. So we'll talk about that offline and uh, see if we can come up with a second session and we'll share that out for everybody. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Uh, I will be happy to continue the conversation. Cool. Awesome. Thank you so much. Gracias a todos y buenas noches. Okay. Bye bye. Gracias.